ground strong, discouraging Russian troops and further frustrating Putin. Leading countries around the world have stepped up in a major way by providing aid to Ukraine, making it possible for the unrelenting Ukrainians to hold their ground. Boris Johnson from the UK announced additional military aid, and the US has been a front runner for support as well. The UN Human Rights Council is investigating abuses by Russian forces to see if they count as war crimes. Putin is putting blame on the West for enticing a global crisis. And in Kherson, located in southern Ukraine, Putin has appointed a governor and pro-Russian separatists will be requesting annexation. Meanwhile, amid all of this war, as we have pointed out in previous shows, Ukraine is known as one of the world's biggest exporters of corn, wheat, and sunflower oil, and has been known as the breadbasket of the world. However, according to Ukrainian's agricultural ministry, flows of these products are largely stalled. Grain exports are currently limited to 500,000 tons a month, which is down from as much as 5 million tons before the war. And this is a total loss of 1.5 billion that Ukraine normally counts on and is another consequence of the war. This is having a rippling effect and causing food shortages around the world as well. And speaking of unintended consequences, due to the war in Ukraine, two important countries who's, who usually claim neutrality are now changing course and making history. Yesterday, Finnish President Sauli Ninisto and Prime Minister Sanna Marin announced Finland is seeking NATO membership and Sweden has also decided they will look to join as well. Both countries have stated that this move is a direct result of the Ukraine invasion. And Russia is furious over the current situation and foreign ministry has stated it'll cripple their current bilateral relationship and would force Russians to take additional, step, additional steps, including using the military. Now Finland has maintained Russia brought this on themselves with their invasion. And Finland also, also shares a lengthy border with Russia, spanning just over 800 miles and would double the length of Russia's borders shared with NATO member countries. And as of Sunday, Russia has stated that they have suspended electricity supplies to Finland stated, uh, starting this past Saturday. Now the only potential issue for joining NATO, besides the Russian retaliation, is Turkey vetoing their admittance. Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan stated Turkey would block their admittance unless both countries take a stand against Kurdish militants fighting in Turkey. The Finnish delegation responded that this is definitely something that can be worked out. And over in Pakistan, ousted former Prime Minister Imran Khan is rallying his supporters to try and regain control of the office. Khan feels his removal was a conspiracy involving the U.S. and Pakistani puppet politicians. And his official rally is called the Freedom March, according to the Washington Post, and the goal behind it is based on anti-American sentiment. Khan has hinted at civil unrest if he's not reinstated, causing more tension in the country, and protests and rallies have been held all around Pakistan against the new government. Meanwhile, Khan's opponents have condemned him for spreading poison and undermining democracy. And new satellite images show China launching practice missiles and some say prepping for an invasion of Taiwan. Helicopters and KQ-200 anti-submarine warfare and maritime patrol or ASWMP aircraft sorties have been identified in Taiwan's air defense identification zone. U.S. intelligence officials claim China is already preparing for takeover in coming years and are watching China issued a warning to the U.S. after the USS Port Royal was spotted in the Taiwan Strait, which China says this was an instigating measure, while the U.S. maintains the ship was performing a routine transit in accordance with international law. Another source of contention between the U.S. and China regarding Taiwan is that the U.S.'s website what once used to say the U.S. does not recognize the independence of Taiwan, now states Taiwan is a close ally. Again, the U.S. denies these actions as escalatory and stated the change was part of routine updates. China believes Taiwan is a part of the homeland while Taiwan craves independence. And as the world watches, so is China, to see how it all unfolds and potentially calculating if the risk for invading Taiwan is worth it. And in Australia, the race for Prime Minister is heating up with voters heading to the polls in less than two weeks. The election is set to take place on May 21st 
and will be between current Prime Minister Scott Morrison, who represents the Liberal Party, and Anthony Albanese, who represents the Labour Party. Morrison was elected back in 2018, however, has been under scrutiny for his slow rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine and home antigen testing kits, and for going on vacation when Australia was blazing in wildfires. Now his opponent, Anthony Albanese, has also been criticized for his lack of knowledge and will need to make leadership style changes. After their last debate, early opinion polls show Albanese now has a slight edge over Morrison, though it's been reported citizens are not over overjoyed by either option. And in Brazil, there is also a much anticipated election coming up, and this one is going to be between incumbent Jair Bolsonaro and former President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva on October 2nd. Bolsonaro's critics are frustrated with how he handled COVID-19 for attacking dem democracy and poor economical leadership. Meanwhile, Lula is making a comeback. He was president of Brazil from 2003 to 2010. However, he was accused of conv and convicted of money laundering and bribery back in 2017. Lula always maintained his innocence, claiming the accusations were unfounded and part of a conspiracy. And in 2021, his conviction was annulled, paving the way for him to add his name to the ballot. Polls currently show and predict Lula's potential victory. And here in the U.S., a senseless and tragic loss of life happened in Buffalo, New York on Saturday. This mass shooting occurred at a Topps Friendly Market supermarket in New York. The incident is currently being investigated as a racially motivated terrorist attack, and 10 people were killed and three others injured. The shooter live streamed the attack on the service Twitch and is currently being detained. And finally, along the U.S.-Mexico border, thousands of migrants and drugs cross the border daily. The Biden administration is facing massive public scrutiny for the lack of security along the border. In just March, 221,303 migrants were stopped at the border, and that was all in just March. For the first half of 2022, more than 1 million people have been encountered trying to cross the border illegally. President Biden plans to soon plans to lift Title 42 soon, which is a measure that allows border officials to immediately expel migrants at the border without allowing them a chance to claim asylum. If, if and when this happens, the number of migrants is expected to sharply increase. One of the largest consequences of an uncontrolled border is the amount of drugs coming across the border. This is a very serious problem and is very sad as fentanyl is infiltrating our communities across America, making all towns border towns, as fentanyl has now caused more overdoses than any other drug. Warnings are now out that fentanyl is in most basic of street drugs such as marijuana, and PSAs are circulating around social media to throw away marijuana that smells like burnt popcorn, which by the way, that smell is a sign of being laced with fentanyl and can kill users. It is important to understand what is happening around the interconnected world, and that's 